Hey everyone, a quick disclaimer. The actual trial ended at about 2.30 a.m. in the morning, normally it ends at about 11 p.m., giving me enough time, roughly about two hours, to get a video out. But I didn't start recording till about 3 a.m. in the morning, and in the video you're gonna see, I'm a little tired. It is 3 a.m., I was listening to the trial for the best part of about eight hours, and it was, well, as you can imagine. So, I have got everything I wanted to say in there. I'm not at the enthusiastic way that I am right now. You'll notice that I'm tired. I am sorry about that. I did try to my best to get that video out last night, but at 4 a.m. Uh, I finally decided enough was enough and I had to get to bed. So this morning I worked at night and finished the video and I'm now releasing it. So I am sorry for the overall quality, but the substance is there. So I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. The final day of the proceedings has come to an end. They have both given their closing statements and well, it was an interesting state of affairs. The first half of the actual day was so boring. I think even the judge was about to pass out and despite the FTC lawyers going about the same question for pretty much two hours around the same topic, they didn't really get anywhere. Then of course came to the closing statements and that's where it got really spicy. The FTC came out fully fledged fighting. For two hours they argued that the merger is bad for Sony and when they saw that this was failing, even the judge asked them, why are you protecting Sony and not the consumer? And they said, we are not. Then their focus turned to consumers all of a sudden. And then of course it went straight back to Sony after about five, 10 minutes. The FTC made claims that Microsoft has incentive to make Call of Duty exclusive, insinuating that yesterday's uh, dispositions by Satya Nadella, Phil Spencer, Bobby Cottage, were all were pretty much lying, and that uh, all lied on stand, lied on oath, lied to the judge. Even Phil's declaration was a lie, and that everything pointed to them lying and then changing their mind to making. Call of Duty exclusive, which didn't make sense. And as was repeatedly proven in court, that the numbers just didn't match up. The numbers didn't add up and that removing it from those platforms and Minecraft again was used as an example where it's on around 20 platforms, removing it on say PlayStation or the Nintendo Switch would be catastrophic, especially considering the PlayStation has doubled the uh, player base of Xbox when it comes to Minecraft and Nintendo has doubled the uh, player base of PlayStation, making it four times the player base size of Microsoft. Crazy, I know. They then turned around and said, well, there's always a chance that they can make exclusive content for Xbox only. And at that point, I had to be scratching my head and I'm like, are you serious right now? <laughs> It was like, hey, look, PlayStation's doing that right now with Call of Duty, but they've got exclusive operators, skins, battle pass rewards, you name it, double XP stuff. And that's okay with you, but you're going to have a problem if Xbox does it. And you're saying, and they were saying like, you know, it would be detrimental to PlayStation and irreparable harm would come if they had a, you know, a lesser degraded version. And I'm like, but you're doing that to Xbox literally right now. How can you defend this crap? Anyway, the judge reminds the FTC that had Sony just signed the deal, this would have been resolved and we wouldn't be here. Insinuating that, you know, the fact is a, a parity contract was offered to them and they refused to sign it. They don't understand why they refused to sign it, but they did. And the fact is, if it was signed, we wouldn't be here right now and everyone would be having their merry tea at home. But they didn't. The topic then moved to COD going full-time exclusive to Xbox. And even then the judge wasn't convinced that there would be harm, you know, there would be harm to the consumers. There wasn't enough of a percentage that actually play the game to make that, you know, case paramount. Referring back to Bailey's uh, case from yesterday, I told you Bailey did really, really well, but the FTC did try to discredit her multiple times, but you know, this, Judge Corley was having none of it. The simple fact is based on uh, Bailey's exposition, expose and uh, information, 
it proved that even if it did go full-time exclusive, the impact that Sony say it will have just won't be there. Of course, the judge doesn't say that it should go exclusive, just that it wouldn't have the desired impact that the FTC is saying. The judge then wanted to know the percentage of people that would move to Xbox should the game go exclusive because the FTC kept saying how the shift in share is going to happen and that if Microsoft gained like exclusive skins or an exclusive weapon or anything like that, people will go over to Xbox and abandon their PS5. And when asked for a percentage of that, the FTC said they didn't know and they couldn't give an accurate information because they don't know. They're just making stuff up on the spot. The FCC then confirmed after much pressing that the 20% by Professor Lee, the one that was discussed yesterday, or was it the day before, was indeed not accurate information and based on Gen 8. For a while in the courtroom, they were basically talking about his expose and his declaration on stand about his research. And after much deliberation, it turns out his research wasn't that reliable at all because it didn't take into effect Gen 9. This pretty much lost the console theory entirely. And as we see later on, the console theory is, you know, the harm to consoles is well and truly dead. So that's one thing that the FTC has completely lost out, lost out on. Another point that kept on propping up every time, you know, the talk, the conversation about call of duty came up and the harm it would cause it was always about the number of you know the main argument was that it sold x amount of million copies x amount of million copies on playstation x amount million of people that are playing on playstation uh it was never about the consumer it was always about the revenue that sony was making from it and i get that's important but that's not what the ftc's job is the FCC's job is to look out for the consumer and the moment they stop doing that well they might as well stop being in business judge Corley categorized part of the FCC's theory art here are hypothetical to say the least so they're still investigating that situation however if you ask me based on what I was hearing up until you know this point the FTC spoke a lot of gibberish. They basically were putting lots and lots of big words into play here that really didn't mount to anything. In fact, what I took from this was that the FTC said that they didn't want Microsoft selling more consoles, which is accurate to what they said. Uh, they didn't want them making a profit. They didn't want them having exclusives and they didn't want their games to be on Game Pass. But they were perfectly okay with PlayStation ticking all of those boxes, including putting their games on uh, PlayStation Plus. It's really weird how this company, the FTC, is so protective of Sony, even though later on you hear them saying that, no, we're not, we're not protecting Sony. Yes, you are. The FCC started saying that they could increase the price, basically saying that if Microsoft controlled Call of Duty, they could make the game £100 or £150. They could then increase, their, increase the price of their console from almost 500 or 530 whatever it is, all the way up to like a £1,000 if they wanted to. And, you know, the judge wanted to know what percentage of players would migrate to Xbox over this. And the FTC said, rapidly moving on, because they had no answer. All they've got is conjecture and theories, but they, they don't have any detailed answers. Remember earlier I was talking about making uh, PlayStation make certain aspects of the uh, game, you know, exclusive, like skin, exclusive skins and exclusive game modes for a whole year, timed exclusive. Well, the judge then asked them, isn't Sony doing this right now? What's the difference? You're saying that Microsoft will do this, but isn't Sony doing that right now and actually monopolizing it and capitalizing from it? Once again, the judges, the FTC's response was rapidly moving on because they had literally no response to that point. Uh, the FCC then said that Elder Scrolls, in a really weird situation here, turned around and said that Elder Scrolls is the 
only game that's equivalent to Call of Duty in terms of gameplay. Now, I don't know about you, but those two games couldn't be any more different. It's mental how different those two games are. Uh, Microsoft later corrected the FTC though, saying that there is two types of Elder Scrolls games. Elder Scrolls Online, which is the one that the Sony rep was uh, referring to, and Elder Scrolls 6. And neither of, as of those titles are exclusive to, you know, are exclusive. And Elder Scrolls Online is still being updated on PlayStation right now. It's a new, you know, it's a game that they know PlayStation fans enjoy, and they are updating it day and date with that of Microsoft. So I don't really see where the problems are lying here. The FTC is pretty much continually on a downhill trajectory. Now the FTC at this point uh, spoke about full divestiture and the judge said, did you offer that to Microsoft? They said yes, but they refused. Of course they're gonna refuse. Divestiture is literally the last option. Uh, the FTC then tried to delay the court, you know, the verdict in a really strong, weird way. But Microsoft refused with a hard stance, saying discovery phase is now closed, and the judge agreed. They basically said you had X amount of time, you know, you know, you had ample amount of time to be able to get this done. If Microsoft could get it done, so could you. Then the FTC finally said it that they're not here to protect Sony, which is weird because they obviously are. Everything that they're doing is here to protect Sony. Now, this fast lasted for about 10, 15 minutes. I mean, they did say we're here to protect the consumers, but that fast ended in about 10 minutes after them saying that and they went back to protecting sony again talking about sony not shipping developer kits to microsoft wilkinson the microsoft lawyer said that the original minecraft is not on a ps5 version because they didn't have the dev kit in time while developing it but other games like minecraft legends are because they did have the development kit and if sony wanted them to they could make an on par version of minecraft withholding dev kits however is their decision it's up to sony if they want to do that and you know the chain of causality the but for chain of causality doesn't well it does break here because it's sony's decision not to supply them with the actual uh dev kits right microsoft wants to make the stuff activision wants to make the game but if you're not going to provide the dev kits well that's a kind of you thing that's not a microsoft thing but you know the ftc argued but for you buying activision this wouldn't have been the case and that is correct but the chain of causality does break because it's sony refusing to do the work not microsoft and then the, the judge corley uh stepped in saying that they didn't have any testimony that microsoft delays giving test kits to sony because they don't they give you know if when mlb was coming out they gave the test kits to them when if it was coming out day and date uh launch title or whatever it was they would provide that so you know that hardware to them to get it out it's just normal proceedings the ftc then tried to turn its attention slightly to uh you know game libraries and they said some services are just a library some are a library and a cloud like game point game pass ultimate some are just cloud like geforce now competition is all about price and content game pass is a strategic driver for microsoft's gaming business and as such is anti-competitive how the hell is game pass anti-competitive and uh, then they were referring to matt booty's email without mentioning him the ftc talks about content moat which is what Microsoft wants to create. They just want to create that moat where all the content is in there for the players to be able to jump in and play. And of course, this was referring to Call of Duty as well. And then the judge Corley stepped in saying, but Mr. Cottage is not putting it onto the Sony or Microsoft subscription services. So what's the problem here if Microsoft step in, buy them, and then put it onto those subscription services? To me, that's pro-competitive. The MTC started talking about some Activision content it was really weird when the FTC was saying that Activision will put more content services if they follow the money. You know, Bobby Cottage has repeatedly said that he is not a fan of cloud gaming because it cannibalizes sales and they like money. But to for the Activision, uh, for the FTC to turn around and say that 
Activision will put more content on there, they are 100% sure. It's weird. I don't doubt it, to be fair, because it is the future. But it is the case. Now, Judge Corley later on asked what happens to NVIDIA if this deal doesn't go through. And NFTC said, well, we hope they'll survive, but if they die, they die. Like, how is that being pro-competitive? But they did follow it up by saying, if everybody starts buying up all the content, we'll end up with one, two or three dominant platforms. And I think at this point, it's where the FTC's case started to shift in their favor. They actually started to fight back with actual points that made actual sense. Judge Cordy recognized that the FTC says cloud is the future. That's where it's going. And we all know this. I've been saying this for a while now, but also acknowledges that it's unclear how exactly this will happen because no one knows how cloud will develop. For all we know, cloud could just crash and burn and that would be the end of it. Wilkinson says it's not enough to speculate on how it's going to happen. The simple fact is, you know, you could speculate on everything and, you know, put stuff into Microsoft's favor, not Microsoft's favor, put it in Sony's favor. The reality is you have to go on evidence and on facts and speculation is neither of those. Then Judge Corley turned to Microsoft. What is it you're saying about cloud argument? That the merger is pro-competitive? Wilkinson basically said, with Xbox, it's just a feature. You can't buy it as a separate product when it comes to cloud. Sure, you can get the top tier Game Pass Ultimate, and that costs, I think, like £2 more than normal Game Pass. But you do get bells and whistles and you do get access to a host of library, uh, you know, a library of like great games. So you can't buy it separately, even though you can put it onto like TVs and stuff. You still can't buy it separately. And that's why it should be treated as a feature and not as a standalone product. Now, contracts were raised again as the FTC continued to lose ground. Wilkerson said there is no dispute that COD is going to be on those services if the transaction goes through. Executives were asked whether those contracts would be honored, and they all said that they would. Now, this has been the case for some time now, but... You know, it's nice to see it reiterated again. The FTC says that it was a tactic to sign for Nintendo to sign the contract as an option, but it doesn't mean it's a guarantee. And of course, then the judge asked, why does it need to be a guarantee? And they're saying, well, if it's not, doesn't that offset concerns? Well, no. The reality is, if they want to put Call of Duty on your platform and you turn around and say, no, I don't want it, for whatever reason, you don't want it. Maybe you've seen the build and it's not up to your standards and you don't want it. It could be any reason whatsoever. But the reality is, it's not up to Microsoft to guarantee that it's going to be on there. They can guarantee to put the offer in to put it on there. It's down to the publisher to actually guarantee that they're going to receive it if they are given the option. And in this case, Microsoft is giving everyone an option. The judge then wanted Microsoft to assess the point that no financial analysis was done, which seemed odd. And at this point, the FTC was really driving it home, like really, really driving it home. I'll go as far as saying that this was now the first point where Judge Corley appears receptive to an FTC argument. Up to this point, Microsoft was sailing through without having to do anything. But now the, F you know, the FTC had the attention of Judge Corley. But of course, the Microsoft representative, Wilkinson, stepped in immediately, like the super soldier she is, and said that they don't do financial analysis for every game they sign in an agreement. It's a publisher's agreement, and once they've got that signed off, they're pretty much able to put the games on whatever they want. Um, the judge said, but this is COD trying to signify its importance. And Wilkinson said, they know from what they've done in the past and already know how COD does on other platforms. At this point, it seems e that even if Judge Corley, which is not yet sure, gives some weight to the fact that no financial analysis of these 10 year agreements was done, which is odd by the way, but she will nevertheless give them weight. And that's at least one way the FTC will lose the cloud part. FTC again tried arguing cloud gaming's importance was US only and the rest of the world didn't matter. 
But Judge had none of it. She had absolutely none of it. At this, by this point, she had shut down the FTC more times during the final force than I can count. They pretty much shut them down more times today than they have done over the past three days collectively. Let that sink in for a moment. So the job subject then changed to Game Pass. Of course, it wouldn't end without it going to Game Pass. And the judge said, if Call of Duty was on Game Pass and not on PlayStation Plus, wouldn't that just incentivize Sony to up their game? It would increase competition as opposing to decreasing competition. I fully agree with this. There's not a fiber in my body that disagrees with this. Then the um, judge asked why Sony doesn't put their games day and date. The FTC said, why doesn't Sony put their games day and date on PS Plus? I don't know, but it is not an absolute response by defendants to say, good, now Sony will do the same thing and build a wallet garden of their own. Judge Corley then voices to FTC her concern that this industry changes all the time. It's dynamic, amorphous, citing the success of Hogwarts Legacy as the subject title, where it did unprecedented amount of sales and it didn't even have Quidditch, right? How, I mean, how is that even possible? Of course, the shift then turned to Microsoft pointing out that Final Fantasy 16 is a PlayStation game and not Xbox game after the FTC just kept on badgering and badgering and badgering. Wilkinson then made it perfectly clear to the judge that despite all of this, no consumer is entitled to have the exact same content they want. But in this case, there's a lot of competitors. Call of Duty, as we know on PlayStation, has exclusive skins, so it's not the same experience. We know on, I believe, Final Fantasy XV, there was something similar. So to turn around and say that they wouldn't do well or they wouldn't be right and consumers would not buy it is a joke. The simple fact is, if Diablo 5 launches day and day on PlayStation, it's going to sell. If the next Call of Duty launches on PlayStation, it's going to sell. There's no denying this. There is nothing in the market that actually shows this. The judge then points the FTC to the fact that without the merger, Activision wouldn't put COD on a subscription service. And that here is the kicker, right? It is. But the FTC was still trying to argue an independent Activision would do deals with multiple services as they follow the money as they say now essentially both sides gave a really good argument the the notion of harm to consoles is dead that's out in the water but the cloud argument remained a mystery because the fcc did put up some good points regarding this and they argued their point successfully and it was really well done uh, Microsoft defended their case with Beth Wilkins. She also had a lot of, you know, rebuttals in regards to the questioning. So they kind of were intertwined for the most part of that time. But what's clear here is that day one, day two, day three, day four seemed like Microsoft had a home run. And when it comes to the, you know, the foreclosure of console harm, harm to console, that's dead. But is there a harm to the consumer? That was not proven either, so that should be dead too. The final one was of course that stinking cloud gaming, and well, despite being a massive fan of it, that could in general be the downfall of this whole 69 billion deal. We won't know what's gonna happen until uh, a couple of weeks from now but all in all it was an interesting case one that the FTC came out took a battering there was no chance of them winning they bored everyone to death I guess that was a tactic before they actually opened up their final closing speeches but you know it's a it's a weird one I want to say that Microsoft won and if I was a betting person, I would bet on Microsoft to having won this litigation. And I think, you know, within five days, they can foreclose. But at the same time, I assume a bunch of you out there are terrified at what and on how this is going to go, because the reality is no one knows. And when the judge gave her final speech, 
it was clear that she had a lot to think about. She disregarded a bunch of stuff the FCC tried to throw in at the end, saying that you're too late. And, you know, thank them all for their kind and mature behavior during the trial. And that, you know, she'll provide an answer as soon as possible. 12th of July was the date that was set because they're going on holiday at the moment. Uh, especially leading up to the 4th of July. So the judge needs some time to go through all the relevant information. But that's pretty much it for this trial for now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. The next videos I have upcoming are one from uh, another one from the ABK regarding, Phil Sp uh, regarding Jim Ryan's comments, which were ludicrous. And another one, surprisingly, from Nintendo, which I think will, you know, shock you all in my opinion because it did shock me well that's it that's the video thank you so much and i'll see you in the next one remain legend